Thank you. Welcome to Eternal Shepherd, to those at home and to those here as we gather in the Lord's house. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. A few announcements to share with you before we begin. Uh, first of all, just uh, most of you should have seen the email went out late, late last night. Uh, last call for those who want to donate to the baby bottle fundraiser that uh, benefits the Pregnancy Care Center, or the Foothills Care Center, get the name right. But uh, in any case, uh, that's being brought to a close, this particular drive. So uh, today is, is your chance uh, to give in one form or another. Other news of note, the women's midweek Bible study begins this coming week. Uh, that's Thursday at 3 p.m. It is a hybrid Bible study, both happening both here in person and being streamed live on Zoom at the same time. I got all that, those details right. At least God willing, that's exactly what will happen. <laughs> and uh, so uh, talk to Margie or Deaconess or uh, Jan Walker for details uh, if you don't know quite what's going on there yet because it's imminent. Also, uh, we did a couple weeks ago when Little Lamb started, we had our preschool and our staff in our prayers here in service, but what we did not get to do because of the circumstances was bring them all in and line them up and introduce them like we normally do. But if you look at your announcements today, you'll see one of our teachers highlighted, and I believe uh, you'll see each of them over the weeks to come. So uh, watch for that. You'll know who's downstairs and who's serving in that way. Also, the newsletters are up on the website, so the latest monthly newsletter is there for your reading and perusing. Uh, other than that, and I think there's some hard copies laying about on tables and things if you, if you prefer the, the old style way of reading. But uh, other than that, I invite you to rise as we begin with our opening here. Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. from him. 
because he is God's servant for your benefit. But if you do wrong, be afraid, because he does not carry the sword without reason. He is God's servant, a punisher to bring wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit, not only because of wrath, but also because of conscience. For this reason, you also pay taxes, because the authorities are God's ministers who are employed to do this very thing. Pay what you owe to all of them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, and honor to whom honor is owed. Do not owe anyone anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and if there is any other commandment, are summed up in this statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. So love is the fulfillment of the law. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Amen, I tell you, 
Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen, I tell you again, if two of you on earth agree to ask for anything, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. In fact, where two or three have gathered together in my name, there I am among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If we look at the world around us in this moment, just within our own borders here in the United States of America, and look at all that's going on in our land and in this country, some see issues of racism, some see systemic problems deeply rooted in our culture and in our very institutions. Others see acts of anarchy and uncalled for destruction. Others still see the dereliction of duty by those in authority. There are many different ways that people are seeing the current events. And our own experiences, our upbringing, our childhood, our perspectives that we carry with us color our views of just exactly how each one of us as individuals tend to see and interpret the events that are unfolding around us and in this land. We can go further, though, to state this truth as well. Our sin also colors how we see these things. It colors the clarity with which we are able to perceive and judge rightly all the details and nuances of what's happening in the world. For all parties, they see the problems going on as a failure of justice. How that's interpreted can be greatly varied. But a failure of justice in one form or another, nonetheless, there is another problem as well. While we all might agree, even if we don't agree on the details, that justice is failing, we also share something else in common. All of us, whatever our role, whatever our perspective, all those out there who are involved in different ways, whether seeming to contribute to the problem or attempting to solve it, We all share in the same sin problem. Because we all end up in the same place. For all of the differences of viewpoint, for all of the differences of behavior, for all of the differences of attitude and politics and interpretation, we all end up in the same exact place, sharing the same exact sins. Resentment, ill will towards others, and hatred in our hearts that we harbor to those with whom we disagree. But God comes upon the scene and he says this, do not owe anyone anything except to love one another. The one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And all of the commandments and all of the laws and everything that God has taught us 
and everything that he has instructed us, and everything that he expects from us and commands us to do, all of it serves love. All of it is there in order to teach us and form us and push us and drive us and move us to love one another. To love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Unless you take that too strictly, let's remember both Jesus and Luther's teaching on such things. That can be even harm done in words or even in thought and heart. Love is the fulfillment of the law that God calls us to keep. Jesus takes it further. He says, don't harm the little ones. Do not harm them. They are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Don't lead them into sin. Do not do anything that would cause them to do wrong by God and bring judgment upon them. Don't lead them to do anything where they would be doing evil or causing chaos or stirring up unrest. But also don't do anything that would lead them to see such things in the wrong way. To misinterpret the signs of the times. Yes, we need to teach them what is sin and what is beyond the bounds of appropriate behavior and interactions and to call sin, sin. But also, we must not forget to teach them that this is a spiritual battle. That there is more going on in the world than just the externals that we see. But that there is a spiritual battle being waged in our society and in the world at large, and also in the hearts and minds of human beings. Those with whom we agree, and those who seem to be against us, they are at war within themselves. The Lord reminds us that the Son of Man came to save what was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep, one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go looking for the one that wandered away? If he finds it, he rejoices more over that one than over the ninety-nine. And in the same way, your Father in heaven does not want even one of these little ones to perish. God does not want to lose a single little one. Who are we talking who are the little ones. Those in the room who have been called to the role of being a parent, you know the answer to this. It brought to mind a commercial that when I thought of it, I thought, was that, was that last year that this commercial played? Or maybe the year before? the magic of the internet, a little Bing search, and I found out it snow. It was like 10 years ago that this commercial <laughs> played. But that's, that's how memorable it was. I had no idea whose commercial it was, but I remembered it. It turns out it's Subaru. But uh, the image is of a father leaning in through an open car window, and his little daughter, 
five or six or something years old is sitting in the driver's seat trying to buckle herself in and he's saying things like this. You got your seat adjusted right? Your mirror's good? Uh, you know, keep, keep your eyes on the road. Uh, keep your phone in your purse. And she's looking at him, smiling and fiddling and fidgeting in the seat. And he's giving all these, stay off the highway. Don't want you on those yet. And, and the little girl is like, Daddy. And he hands her the keys. And then when the scene cuts back, there's his teen driver ready to pull out on the road for the first time. A telling and honest commercial. Parents, I don't care how old your children are now getting, they're still your little ones, are they not? You still see them like they looked that day you held them in your hands and said, wait, what, I can just walk out of the hospital with this young thing? What, what do I do now? And they're always your little ones. We are all God's little ones that he designed and allowed to be born into this world and desired to see them come into being and longs to have them as the children of the Heavenly Father through Christ. He wants them all, all of them, to be with him. All of them. Corrupt politicians, his little ones. Rioters, his little ones. Reactionary citizens, his little ones. Judgmental outside observers who look down on it all with arrogance, his little ones. We are all his little ones. And many on the verge of being lost or having already wandered off. The Son of Man came to save what was lost. Jesus has gone looking. He has gone looking for those who have wandered off. Jesus seeks after them all because he has love in view. Because he cares about them and he wants them to know their Heavenly Father. He wants them to know his love for them. A love that is so strong it put a cross in view. And it took him to it. In love, Jesus fulfilled the law. In love, Jesus fulfilled all of the law. He kept every law that God has ever given, and he did it all perfectly and right. But more than that, Jesus fulfilled the law by paying for all sin and wrongdoing by paying the price that the law demanded for sin. And he paid the price for mine, and he paid the price for yours, and he paid the price for all those we see out there in the world, whatever their problems may be. Jesus fulfilled the law. And in so doing, he made the forgiveness of sins available through Jesus Christ. So that in him we can find grace. He fulfilled the law so that we are now set free from our sin. So that we may now be the ones who fulfill the law of love toward our neighbor. To look upon them with the same heart that God has for them. 
So let us gather in his name, here and in our homes and wherever we are found, gathering in his name so that our Lord Jesus may be among us in love. That he would form our thoughts with love and our hearts for that purpose. So that as we speak out, yes, even for what is good and just and right and true, and as we lobby for it in the public realm and sphere, as we go to the polls and we do our voting, and as we just live our lives and behave from day to day and interact and speak about the current events and all that we would do, that we would be driven by love, for the well-being of all people, both in this life and for the life to come. Amen. Yeah. This time I invite you to rise. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Give your church wisdom and strength by your spirit, that she may always act in love for the little ones, for the neighbor in need. And be present among your people, Lord, to serve us with the gifts of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, give to us good and honest leaders who will govern according to your word and will. Give us grace that we may not fail to pray for those who lead us and to act as good citizens and good neighbors to one another. Give peace to the nations, bring an end to violence, prejudice, and racism. Guide us to respect all whom you have made and treat each other with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, you sent rain upon the earth, and you turn the seeds into plants rich with fruit for harvest. Accept our thanks and praise for your continued goodness in providing a good harvest and food for all. Give us wisdom that we may use your resources wisely and extend your care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord, you urge us to give special care and guidance to the young. Grant that same care to those young in faith. Give us grace that we may not lead them into temptation or sin, but guard their faith by making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort of those who grieve, and the peace of those near death. Hear us on behalf of all who face such trials, that they may be sustained in their afflictions comforted in life and death, and delivered to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O Lord, de deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger, from economic hardship and from political turmoil, that kept in faith we may be preserved through this mortal life, and in death be received into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, who cry to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who with the Spirit you are one God and one Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We pray together as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.